<laughs> you know that tune like ta 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 the Calabria? Who made that? I made that. <laughs> When did we first meet? Let me think. I think I've known of you for at least five or six years. But I think the first time we really hung out was at Tomorrowland Winter. Yeah. When we really like had yeah. time to talk. Like, because it's been like an airport, like, hey! It's like, I, <laughs> I, know, I know your music from like 10 years. And we never met. No, it's insane. I send you Instagram messages. That's but true. I did. You never. But at the what? day at Tomorrowland. Who the fuck am I speaking to then? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was like long time ago. Yeah, yeah, true. Oh. Ah, okay, a million now. okay. So that day at Tomorrowland. Yeah. He was not in, you were not wearing the hat. That's true. You, we were like with. Uh, That's true. I, I, yeah. I came over to see, to hear somebody. Yeah, yeah I like. Was just hanging out. It was Steve Angela, I think some of some. That's true. And yeah. I was there in the couch like that, and I saw. I know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone told me, it's Kosh. I said, fuck, man, it's Kosh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's there, so we met at Tomorrowland Winter uh, yeah, yeah. this year, it's uh, in March. Yeah, it's very it true. March. Yeah, recently. Yeah. And we talked for like hours. Personally. Yeah. But we talk, we've been talking on, for a while online for since a while. But yeah. I mean, yeah, it was super good to connect finally. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because every time I play Brazil, people always talk about it. Yeah. Like, pretty much everywhere. I was there uh, for your time warp set. Oh, yeah, no I way. There. I was there for an outdoor stage. The morning one? Yeah. Oh, amazing. All my friends like love you. Like, <laughs> it was like dying like the, for your music. And, uh, it's amazing, <laughs> man. We were absolutely aware of each other's music. That's why we met. Exactly. <laughs> right? So, yeah, like. For sure. I mean, I, I've been I, following I, you forever. I love his music. Like, for me, this guy is a fucking genius. Thank you, <laughs> genius. Thank you. My favorite ones now is Opa, oh, which is very old. That is very old. And Fish. Goldfish. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I play Goldfish uh, last Saturday uh, before Solomon. Uh, like I, I delivered the decks with nice with that track, and everyone was like crazy, crying, clapping. Wow, man! I love that. That's my favorite for now. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a big one. Yeah, with the weird flute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is so so silly when you think yeah, about wow, it. But I love it. Makes no sense, really. But the, but yeah, the people connect with that. For they, some reason, I think it's the naivete, like it feels childish somehow. Yeah. In a good way. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, MGMT kids, exactly. something like that. that kind of thing. Yeah, it's funny because I've been, I've been, I've been following your releases for many years, and I think my favorites, I think the stuff you did with Ashiba, she's a good friend. Yeah, Ashiba. Yeah. She's such a sweetheart. I love that stuff. You did a record called. Feeling good many years ago. It was yeah, like feeling the bass, good. Well, so the bass like main stage. I love that record mm -hmm. because it's so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> in the best it's so way. Silly. It's so silly. It's silly. It's really it's silly. main stage silly. I love that record, <laughs> and but it works. I, it really works. And then yeah. obviously the Paradise remix, yeah. which I really like too, because I love the original. And actually, I wanted to do a remix of that record, and it never happened. I told James. Really? I want to is it, <laughs> no, because it makes me feel super happy when exactly. I hear the record, it gives you I like this, that. it beats a vibe somehow, exactly. right? Yeah, I love that record. And every, every one played that for last summer and this summer, crazy. Obviously, because it really works. Crazy, yeah. Weird thing, before COVID hit, I was invited to play in Mongolia, Mongolia. of all places. That's probably the weirdest place I've invited. The problem is it never happened because COVID came. But other than that, I'd say maybe Kazakhstan. I played Kazakhstan so the, once. The was... weirdest place. Like, this is a good or bad, like if I say it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The weirdest that I never, a place that I never thought that I would go, maybe Nepal. You played Nepal? I didn't, but they invited. Oh man, I would have loved to Nepal. play Nepal. That would have been incredible <laughs> though. Yeah. I wonder if there's a scene there. But 
there's there's another the, the, the other space that I've played it like Alexandria from Egypt. Okay. Yeah, that that was like kind of like okay, this is different. I don't know anything about like like the how they how they behave like so the, yeah, yeah. the society yeah. is totally different and I, and I was scared I was with the car and they stop us with fucking guns like the army what are you doing here and I said I'm gonna play I'm a DJ and I say <laughs> okay okay <laughs> I got a lot, man. Oh man, what is the craziest touring story? You I got, I got one. One is crazy because I don't know how to drive. I don't drive cars. And then the promoter came in to pick me up with a Ferrari. Mm. And he, he said, you drive. And I said, I don't know how to drive. And I say, I don't care, you drive. <laughs> and they say, bro, it's gonna be a fucking problem. <laughs> I don't drive. When I look back, there was a girl back in the back. I said, bro, I don't drive. And they said, okay, okay. But I have more. Yeah. We, so you we, have plenty. I have plenty, yeah. I have a good one. We had rented, I'm not going to say it was a villa, it was like a house. We had rented a house and I, and I went back home and chilled and I woke up the next day at, I think, seven in the morning and I walk into the garden and it's uh, P. Diddy, and I think Buster Rhymes and like <laughs> all these rappers sitting in the garden having a very civilized drink. Here, right? here in Ibiza. Yeah, in Ibiza. And my manager comes up and says, "Yeah, I told them you were sleeping, so they could should be quiet." And I was like, "I can't handle this shit." I went back to bed. There's just no <laughs> way I'm dealing with any of this stuff. It was just too nuts. <laughs> so he doesn't know yet, but I did uh, an idea for him. Oh, perfect! I'm gonna open or play the second track, and you listen. Perfect. Because we told like in, yeah we spoke we, we were like we were speaking in Tomorrowland and in doing a an, uh, collaboration Absolutely. or an EP yeah so I did uh, a few ideas perfect and I'm gonna send you yeah so what I look for in collaborations is always and 100% personal connection exactly if I don't like somebody I can never make music exactly and that's you like me of course <laughs> don't be silly <laughs> <laughs> no it's like I know I think. This, if you're gonna connect with someone musically, you have to be able to realize their intentions and also what their story is. That's the most exactly. important thing. Yeah. So that's been the backbone of pretty much all my life decisions, which is which is maybe a very feeble way of handling things, yeah. but that's what it is. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear the ideas. Yes. I'm so you're happy. You're gonna hear it live today. Perfect. <laughs> is there a? Is it a? Did you sample Scatman John for it? No. <laughs> Not Calabria also. No, okay, you didn't sound Calabria, okay. <laughs> that would have been easy though. <laughs> I had a weird experience here the other day. So, I always had this idea that there were these particular people that I really wanted to make something with, some heroes, you know. And uh, a while back, I connected with a female artist that I've been looking up to for the last 15 years. And I had her like on this pedestal up here and I was like always wanted to do something with her because her voice and her singing is so incredible still is and then um, I worked on something for her and we connected but I just realized that I really didn't like her very much wow. which is terrible because yeah. I think never meet your hero exactly that's the story so I'm gonna say I don't want to collaborate with any heroes anymore I'm done with that. I would rather collaborate with somebody completely new and interesting. I know the guy that I want to collaborate. The guy who sings... Oh, the man. oh yeah. trolls! I don't know him, but he's I amazing. love his voice. He's a sweetheart. He's the best guy. Yeah. You what a him. voice. Yeah. Every time that I played that track, everyone was crying on the dance floor. And I was playing the track before the art bot. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was yeah. playing the original mm. one. Like, I play with your artist and yeah. say, this is the art bot remix. I say, no, this is the original. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kind of voice, like low tone. Look, that guy, I mean, I wish I, I wish I could get him to make more tracks with me, but the thing is, he's a bit, he's a bit recluse. But also, I wouldn't really think, I don't, I don't know if we could ever make something better than that. Exactly. And I, and I can never take the credit for it because he wrote that song. Exactly. He's, he, he wrote the melody, I produced it. 
but like, that it's an incredible song. Like the fact is, uh, we like to collaborate with talented people, of course, and pure. Yes, and the people like uh, they are true with the music. Yeah, that's it. No divas. No divas. No time for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that tune like ta 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 the Calabria. Who made that? I made that <laughs> <laughs> a lifetime ago in, uh, I guess, 1995. <laughs> I think it was 2000, 2000, 2000 2001. It's actually a crazy story because I was um, I was a res I had a residence in Copenhagen at a club and I was invited to play in Calabria. OK. And I went to play and I made that record after that and they offered me a residency at a club in Calabria and I thought, wow, my career, it's finally happening, something big. <laughs> And it completely fell through. Everything, <laughs> nothing worked out. But the track happened, you know. The like track si since like <laughs> two, two years uh, back, I didn't know that he, he made the fucking riff of Calabria. <laughs> it's like the, because there's like hundred versions. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like crazy. But the first one was, you know, the first one came in 2002, and it was a big record here. And everybody played it for two years. Alex Caudine was after that? Yeah, yeah, long time after. He's came 2006. 2006 or seven. So, like, yeah, long time after that. And then it, it has its own life. It has nothing to do with me anymore. It crazy. just keeps going. It's, I mean, it's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, it is really crazy. I'm very, actually very proud of no, it. It's proud, uh, yeah. It's like a big... You made, you made it from the world. Destination. <laughs> na, 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 I was a kid and I was listening to this record. I never thought it was like made by you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> My question to you is: When you perform, or you're in the studio, or with your persona, what is it you want? your audience to feel? What is it you're trying to give them? I'm always uh, trying uh, to make them to have the best time of their lives. Mm. So when I'm doing a track, I'm always like thinking, okay, how this is will sound for mm. them? So yeah, it's trying to, I'm always trying to, to, to give them the best times of their life. Like a night they will, they will never forget. So it's basically about that. Yeah. I think that's that's a that's a beautiful way of looking yeah. at it. Yeah, for sure. I think that's it. Yeah.